Well, hello guys and welcome to Mr. Web Reviews. And today we are going to build an online food ordering website from scratch. So this is a complete step-by-step -step tutorial, which means that you don't need any experience to follow along as I've designed this tutorial for complete beginners. So you don't need to know any coding skills either because we'll be using a page builder, which is super easy to use thanks to its drag and drop features. Now let me show you how amazing this website looks like and how by the end of this video you can achieve the exact same results and you'll end up with a very professional looking website with a complete food ordering system. And this is the final result. Basically you have a beautiful website with your own logo, your brand name here. If you scroll down in the border section with your opening hours, your menu here, well detailed and people can order online immediately. So all you have to do is click order online and they can select any of your uh, meals and they can add to cart. So if you click on this now, as you can see, I can select for instance, chicken madras. I can have it with plain rice. I can have Himalayan special and put my own dietary requirements and just ready to order along with a beautiful about us page describing your restaurant with beautiful pictures, pictures of your staffs, chefs, etc., and social proofs as well. And then we have the contact page with pictures, opening hours again, Google Maps so people can find you easily, an inquiry form where people can send inquiries straight to your email address, your contact details and social media links. So before we go ahead, I'd like to address the cost of this project. So we have our hosting, which starts at 99 cents per month. So if you multiply that by 12, that's about $12 a year. And we're going to use two premium plugins here. Uh, one is our food ordering plugin, which comes at a price of 139 euros, which is about 160 in dollars. And then the product add-ons plugin, which comes at $49, which brings our total to $221. Now, this is not the cheapest option out there, definitely not, but these plugins are designed to work natively with WooCommerce, which means that it is an extremely reliable option. And when it comes down to running an online food ordering system, you don't want any problems, that's for sure. It has to run smoothly and without any delays, lag time, and even any error messages. So I'll let you decide if $220 is worth the investment for your restaurant. So again, total peace of mind is truly what these plugins have to offer. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start building your online food ordering website. Okay, so step number one is to get your domain name and web hosting. So to get a domain name and web hosting, just click on the very first link in the description or go to Mr. Web Reviews. So go on to my website here, Mr. Web Reviews, and you can click on this link here, hosting. And this will bring you automatically to this page. So this is a special co-branded page. Let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. A special co-branded co page uh, that I have with Hostinger. So Hostinger is where I host all my website because they're fast, affordable and reliable. And they have excellent round the clock uh, customer support as well. Because when it comes to uh, hosting, of course, you can understand support is crucially important. And by using the link in the description, you'll have access to a massive discount on your hosting, as you can see, up to 90% here. But not only that, on top of that, if you use that link, you'll be able to use an additional promo code, an additional promo code, which I'll explain in a minute. So we have the single hosting plan here, which is for one website only, as you can see. So if you're planning to host only one website or maybe just trying things out, then this would be absolutely fine. Now you can always upgrade from one to the other anyways, you know, later on down the line. So what else? Oh yeah, as you can see here, they all offer free SSL certificate, all these uh, plans. So what is an SSL certificate? Basically, it's the padlock here in your address bar that uh, uh, shows that your website is secure and safe to purchase from. So this is free with all plans as well. So one thing you don't get uh, with the single plan is the free domain name registration. So that's $8.99 that you'll have to pay 
uh, with this plan that you want with the other two because this one is included in it for free free domain name 899 so if you factor that in already it looks like the premium plan at 199 is already it's already more advantageous but again if you're just trying things out and you don't want to spend too much money the single plan is fine now bear in mind the single plan is limited to 100 gig of bandwidth as you can see here so if you're planning to get a good bit of traffic and don't want to worry about limitations regarding bandwidth you might want to select the premium plan uh, this uh, might definitely be your best option here now what's the difference between premium and business it's basically the storage space here as you can see 20 gig we go to a whopping 100 gig and the amount of visit from 25,000 monthly visit to 100,000 monthly visits so uh, now let's go ahead with the premium plan so from here you have to select your billing cycle so again as you just try if you're just trying things out you can select this one here which would cost you uh, ten dollars and nineteen cent let's go here at the bottom because there's a set of fee as well added to this one if it's monthly there's an extra 4.99 which would plus taxes so those prices are before tax plus tax which will bring the total to eighteen dollars and sixty seven cent or you can choose 12 months so a full year which would cost you 71 dollars so 71 dollars so normally you would think if you go for two years select the two years it would cost you 140 so twice this amount no not at all it's only 90 so you're saving a big chunk of money here you know if you go for 24 months so instead of 71 for basically an extra 19 dollars you can get two years and now you would think that 90 times 2 180 would be 48 months no for just an extra five dollars you can get 48 months in total so you go from 71 dollars for a year to 95 for uh, four years so now again it's really up to you i cannot uh tell you which one to choose you can select one month uh, if you decide just the one month it's fine or 12 months 24 or 48 i personally would pick i would choose this one personally it looks like the best value here uh, but uh, again it's up to you so let's go ahead with this one for now now we'll go for just the one year so as you can see if we scroll down you offered with different payment methods so you can use credit cards uh, paypal coin payments so this is uh, like uh, the bitcoins and all that and google pay now as you can see because this is a co-branded page that i have with hostinger you're getting a whopping uh, $50 discount, which is 41% on this one. Now, on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to give you a coupon code now that gives you an additional 7% discount on this amount. So if you click on this now, have a coupon code. Yes, we do. Click on this and type in all in capital letters, Mr. MR Web Reviews. And then click the plus sign here so we were at 88 dollars and you saved an extra seven percent again on top now so that's it all in very very uh, advantageous indeed so let's go ahead and click submit payment so i selected paypal now and submit payment and we'll be redirected to the paypal payment page which is there so uh, from here on you can obviously just click on paypal checkout enter all your details and go through the whole checkout process and once you've gone through the whole checkout process you receive a confirmation email from hostinger and you you'll have a link in that email you click on that link and this will bring you to this welcome message on your admin panel so from here we're prompted to set up our premium shared hosting and ssl certificate activation and we can claim our free domain as well so let's go ahead with this let's set up this premium access now so welcome to hostinger so start now so claim your free domain buy a domain or use an existing domain so let's claim our new domain and we can have dot online dot shop dot tech dot com dot website dot space so plenty of different options here well let's try a dot com and i'm going to try mr web reviews tutorials why not 
and then search. Hopefully it's available. It is actually. So let's continue and build a new website. Or do you want to migrate my website? I'm going to skip. I will start from scratch. And let's finish. Okay. So this is initializing the setup. So please wait. It can take up to three minutes. So let's be patient. So complete domain Mr. Web Reviews Tutorials.com registration. So I need to fill out our details here. So I'm registered as a limited company. So let's go ahead with this. And to contact details. So David Garay Company 7175 Shelton Street. City of London, the country would be United Kingdom, use an option, so this is London, KLL, there you go, and the postal code WC2H9JQ, and I've finished the registration now. So again, initializing setup, your website is ready. Very good. So manage your site. So let's click on this. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Step by step. So as you can see here, this is our dashboard. We have a hosting plan premium. The server is based in the Netherlands. This is the IP. My domain name is MrWebReviewsTutorials.com. Web server light speed. And here we have order, accounts, email, domain, website, files, database, advanced, and other. So I suppose if you want to install our website, we have the auto installer. So what are we going to install? We're going to install WordPress, WordPress with WooCommerce. Let's go with a simple WordPress installation for now. So we're going to install it in the yes okay in the root folder so don't need anything here perfect so admin name so we're going to create some credentials here so i'm gonna okay create a database and everything here yeah. update only Always update. I'm going to put Mr. Web Reviews to Orioles. Install. So there you go. So we have our WordPress installed now. And now that our WordPress installation is complete, let's go and set up an email address, link to your account. So as you can see, you have the name at your domain name.com so in our instance is at mr web review tutorials.com so it could be whatever you wish you could it could be info at or accounts at hello at whichever so let's go with info at info at and then type in your password there you go and all you have to do after that is simply click create and there you go. Your email address is ready now. Info at yourdomainname.com, which you can use on your website as a professional looking email address linked to your domain name. Okay, already all set now with those settings. So now we can access our WordPress dashboard. And for this, you can click, you click on dashboard. You go on dashboard here again, and then edit website. And this will bring us to our WordPress dashboard. Okay, guys, so welcome to our WordPress dashboard. And as you can see uh, on our WordPress dashboard, we have two sides. We have a menu here with all the different options. And then we have the overview of what's happening on our website. So we can clean this up a bit. You know, you can close all these tabs if you want to. Just like that. And we won't need any of these. So you can just close and dismiss this. And as you can see now, we have a clean uh, working environment. So the first thing you want to do is to clean up all the plugins as well. So we're going to head for the plugin section here and we're going to the installed plugins. 
and whatever plugin is installed by default you might just click this and then bulk action and then delete apply because you're not going to need any of these for now we're going to take care of this manually ourselves and now we have an absolutely 100 percent clean wordpress installation so as you can see here we're going to go through all of these anyways you know but we have post media pages this is where you you manage all your pages comments if people leave comments on your post appearance got to do everything to do with the theme and how your website looks like so let me show you at the moment i'm going to open here so this is what our website looks like at the moment so this is the default 2021 um, wordpress theme and we're going to change that uh, for our own as well anyways so you have the plugin sections everything that's got to do with the users uh, a few tools for import and export and as well all the settings so we're going to go through all these one by one anyways as we go through this tutorial so the first thing we want to do is to install our theme so we head for appearance now and then themes and then you're going to click add new so as you can see this is our current one so it's the 2021 theme which is this one and we're going to replace that with our own so for that we're going to add new now and as you can see we presented with a few uh, different uh, themes and templates here but what we want to do now is to go into the search box and type in Astra so as you can see here we have Astra here this is the theme we want to install and for that all we have to do is just hover on top and you can see the uh, install button here so you just click on that now install and as you can see there's a progress bar going and then it says installing and as you can see now it is installed so our theme is installed now so the next step is to activate our theme so just click activate there you go and we have a message here thank you for installing astra so did you know astra comes with dozens of ready to use starter templates install the starter template plugin to get started so that's what we're going to do now so just to make a use of these templates so i'm just going to open this in a different tab just to show you now so all these uh, different templates you can install on this theme so basically astra is free and it has a premium premium version as well so what's the difference between the two well basically when you have a label like this that says agency it means that that's a paid version basically you know but all the others like this one and this one are totally 100 percent free so if we look here for a restaurant maybe sorry restaurant as you can see so let me zoom in a little bit as you can see we are presented with a few uh, different options for restaurant we have six of them we can choose from but you can see there's agency 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 labels on those so these are premium versions and as you can see we have three of them that are free so this is barbecue restaurant this one italian restaurant and this one hotel and bnb so these two are relevant to our tutorial here and let's click on this one to see what it looks like and let's click on this one as well and then we can choose among those two so we have steak and barbecue as you can see you can book a reservation so that's very nice indeed or we have the other one the fresco italian restaurant i think this one is probably more suited to our needs here so we'll go ahead and install this one instead so let me close this so we bear in mind it's fresco we're going to install and we can close this as well so let's go back to our uh, wordpress dashboard so in here uh, where it says get started click on that there you go now as you can see we are presented with four different options so these are page builders basically so these are drag and drop uh, features that you can use to build your pages which is very user-friendly very intuitive indeed 
And from experience, uh, the best one would be Elementor. So you would want to click on this now, and we're going to install Elementor. So click on that. There you go. And now, as you can see, we have all these different uh, templates, different themes. So again, we're going to type in restaurant here. And we're going to select our Italian restaurant. So this one here, the Fresco, this is the one we're going to install. So all you have to do in just one click, we're going to import the demo and everything all at once. So just click on that. And as you can see, we have, that's the home page. This is the menu. So very nice, very easy to follow along for your visitors. You have an about us page and a contact page. So you have Google Maps, phone number, opening hours, contact form and all that. So we're going to install all of these now. And then I'm going to show you how to configure each and every one of those pages one by one. So let's go ahead. And all we have to do now is just click import complete site. So click on this. And as you can see, all you have to do now is just basically import. So if you want, you can fill out your details here. It's just uh, to provide them with some feedback. So you can put in your name, uh, why you're downloading this theme and your email address maybe, and they might send you some uh, marketing uh, tips and all that. But for now, I'm just going to skip. But it's really up to you. If you want to fill out those details, you can. You're more than welcome indeed. So this is importing now, as you can see. So it's going to take a few moments. So depending on how fast your internet connection is, it might take up to a few minutes. So let's be patient. So there you go. Hooray! The website was imported successfully. So we can have a look at the website now. See what it looks like. So there you go everything has been important so that's what our website looked like before importing the theme and that's what it looks like now so we have our logo our menu here with our pages menu about us contact page and as you can see we have a reservation button here on top which is very prominent and very easy to find for anyone who will visit your website and we're going to replace this button with our online ordering system so let's scroll down a little bit. As you can see, uh, there's opening hours and all that. Welcome, more about us. So this will bring you to the About Us page. Our menu, you can have your main uh, products here, maybe main uh, meals. And uh, again, discover our entire menu. So we're going to replace all these buttons with order online, you know, to link to the online ordering system. And we're going to add one here at the bottom as well, along uh, next to the phone number. Okay, so we're not going to need this one anymore, so we can close this tab. So this is our website and this is our WordPress dashboard, so we can close this as well. So now let's go back to our plugins section. And we're going to install another one, which is called a maintenance page. So add new and you just search for maintenance. And you're just going to select this one here. It has over 500,000 installation. So basically a maintenance plugin, what is it for? It's just to display a page. Uh, so if people go and visit your website while you're working on it, uh, they won't see your website. They'll see a temporary page that says, sorry, uh, this website is under construction or under maintenance. So you keep your privacy basically, you know. So we just click install now. Okay, and then you activate this now. Activate. Perfect. So you can see you have an added uh, tab here in our menu. That's called maintenance. So if you click on this, you will see that the status is actually on at the moment. So what's the difference? So, so if you're actually logged in as an admin and working on your website, you'll be able to access your own website yourself. So if you open another tab, you will see the website. Now, if I open an incognito page and I just put this, enter, anyone else from the outside world who will try to access your website, that's what they'll see. Uh, maintenance mode is on. 
So basically, they will not see anything that's happening on your website. So you will be able to see everything, but anyone from the outside world will not be able to access it, which is a very handy tool indeed, because while you're working on your website, you don't want people to see and access it, obviously, until you're ready to uh, release it and publish your website. So at the moment, we're just going to leave it on so uh, no one can access your website. And then one more plugin we have to install. It's our uh, plugin from the Barn2 website. So let's go into Plugin, Add New. And this time we'll have to click on Upload Plugin. And then choose File. So wherever you put your uh, file that you download from the, downloaded from the Barn2 website, you go and select that file. So it will look at something like this, WooCommerce Restaurant Ordering.zip. So it's an archive file. Then you click on that and you simply click open and then install now. So it's, that's installed now, as you can see. And the next step basically is to activate this plugin. And as you can see, our WooCommerce restaurant ordering uh, plugin is installed and we have a um, message here on top that says please install WooCommerce in order to use the WooCommerce restaurant ordering extension because it is a WooCommerce based plugin so we'll have to install WooCommerce so the next step is very simple we click add new and don't worry we're almost done with installing plugins so here we type WooCommerce And there you go. So here you can see the, the very first one, WooCommerce, this is the one. And then click Install. There you go. Now it is installed. And all we have to do now is just activate it again. So just click Activate. So that's it. That's us done. Uh, this plugin is installed as well. And now we are prompted to configure WooCommerce, but we're not going to do this now. We'll do that later on in, during this tutorial. So for now, we just click uh, Skip Setup and then No Thanks. And then we're back to our WordPress dashboard. Okay, then our next step is to configure our homepage. So I'm going to show you how to change your logo to make it your own, to change the message here on the homepage, to change the background picture here, and then how to customize your opening hours and so on and so on and put your main meals here instead of those ones. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go in here now and we go to pages, all pages. And as you can see, these are all our pages. So we have About Us, uh, the Cart page, the Checkout page, Contact page, Home page, etc., etc. So the page we're interested in at the moment is the Home page, which is this one. And if you hover on top, as you can see, we have this option here, this link to Edit with Elementor. And you'd want to click on this now. So let's click on Edit with Elementor. So again, Elementor is a drag and drop visual composer for WordPress, which is very uh, user friendly and easy to use. So how does Elementor work is very simple. On the left hand side, you have your menu here with all the different elements you can use on your page. And it's basically a drag and drop, very simple to use uh, system. And your page, this is a preview of your page. So if you hover on top here, you can see we have a plus and an X and then a blue border around this one. This is a section. So if you click on it, you can see it says section. And then the section is made out of different columns, as you can see, one, two, three columns here. So if you click on this, this is a column. And then we, the column is made out of different elements. So if you click on this one, for instance, this is an image and this one is a heading. So this is basically how it's uh, designed. So you have your section made out of different columns or maybe just one column sometimes and different elements. And if you scroll down the page, this is the same here. You can see, so this is one uh, section. This is another section here. Every time you have that plus and the X here on top, uh, it means this is a new section. And this section is made out of two, one, two, three different uh, columns, as you can see. 
So that's basically it. Very simple to use indeed. So let's go and change uh, this section here. So first, let's start by changing our background picture here. So uh, let's say maybe you run an Indian restaurant, a bit different. This is Italian, so maybe uh, you're providing Indian food. So what we do basically is click on those uh, few dots here to select our selection, or you can click anywhere on the selection, not on those columns over it, anything around it. So if you click on it, that's your section. And then if we go into style, you can see this is our picture basically, you know. So if we click on this now, and then we click upload files, and then we go and select a file. So I went ahead and downloaded a picture already. So we can open this one here. So this one is for Indian food. So there you go. Now bear in mind you'd want to uh, select a picture that's uh, big enough. So this one is 1720 by 1100. But you might want to select a HD one would be 1920 by 1080. Uh, which would be even better, you know, but you don't want a small picture here because it's going to blow it up and it, it's going to get pixelated then, you know. So to keep a sharp, nice uh, quality image, you want to select a proper picture. So insert media now. So as you can see, we have our background here. So it's still readable because the background is dark enough, but you can make it darker if you want to. So how do you do that? So it's very simple, we can add a background overlay. So if you think that it's not easy to read and the contrast between your text and the background is not sharp enough, then you can go into background overlay. And as you can see here, we have the opacity. So you can increase that a little bit maybe. See, now it's getting a bit darker. So increase the contrast between the background and your font in the, in the, in the front here, you know. So just to make it a bit darker, possibly, just like that. And when you're happy, you just click Update. So let's have a quick look at the front end. So we had an Italian restaurant. Let's see how this looks like now. There you go. Now we have naan bread and all these uh, delicious Indian food. So this is absolutely perfect indeed. So now let's go and change our text here. Instead of fresco, let's call it something else. And let's put Indian food specialties. So how do you do that? Very simple again. So in here, just click on the fresco. And instead of fresco, you might call it, I don't know, let's say the Himalayan. 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 There you go. Himalayan. That looks nice, actually, doesn't it? Himalayan. There you go. Now this is more Indian uh, cuisine than anything else. And now you want to change this as well. So let's click on this. And as you can see, it says Italian specialties. Well, let's change this to in Indian food specialties. There you go. Very nice and simple indeed. And the tagline here, good food, good wine. You may leave it as is or change it to fit your own requirements. But uh, this is basically how you change the header. And then once you finish, when you're happy with the result, you just click update. And that's it. So if we go back to our homepage now and refresh. Now we have the Himalayan restaurant. Indian food specialties. Good food, good wine, with a nice picture of uh, Indian food in the background. So this is uh, how you change the, the main hero section here. So this is called the hero section. So this is the first thing that uh, your visitors will see when they land on your website. So it's very important to take care of this indeed. So now let's scroll down this page a little bit. So as you can see, this is a quick about us. So you want people to know exactly uh, what you have to offer, uh, what are the main benefits, why they should order from you, maybe a quick uh, history of your restaurant, how long you've been in business or something like this. So you want to provide a quick uh, overview, a quick information about your business. So basically here you should answer two questions. Where are you based and why should customers choose you over anyone else? So this is basically what you want to achieve here in this section. And also uh, let them know about your opening hours.
So when you run a restaurant and do home deliveries, obviously uh, you're targeting the local uh, community and people in your city or maybe town. So you might want to let them know immediately where you're based. So you could have something, let's say you're based in Dublin. So Dublin's favorite exclamation mark. So this way people will know and be able to address immediately the question, where are they based? Well, they're based in Dublin, they'll know immediately. So then welcome. And then in here, you might put something that's going to make you stand out compared to anyone else. Why should they choose you uh, over anyone else? Why would they choose your Indian restaurant or uh, pizzeria or anything else over anyone else? So you have to give them a good reason here, you know. So in this head headline here, you might put something a bit punchy, you know, something, uh, the main reason why you think people are choosing you. And for that, you might ask your existing customers and ask them why are they choosing you, why they keep coming back and listen to their feedback. And maybe they're going to tell you something like, oh, we like the atmosphere or super uh, friendly stuff or something like this. So this is what you can use. Then you can just put super uh, friendly stuff that will make you feel at home let's say something like this you know if this is the feedback you get from your customers you will put it here and you're guaranteed success with this you know because this is why people come to you and they why, why they keep coming back so you might emphasize this here of course you know so and then you can put a small description here now uh, we've been in business since uh, 2001 family run business based in Dublin, da, 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 you know, and then you can put simply here and how do you do that again? But instead of this text here, you put your own text. So you write your own content, sorry, own content here and simple as that, you know. So whatever you want to say about your business, you'll put it here. And then we can change this picture as well. So it's the same principle as when we change the banner picture here. So basically you just click on it. You can see the small pencil, click on that. And you can see this is our picture. So we're going to select another picture now. So all we do is click on this, upload files, select files. And I went ahead and selected a few pictures here. So let's go with this one. Why not? Open. And then insert. So as you can see here, this is not the same ratio, obviously, you know, because this look a bit flatter. So we can change this as well. So how do we do this? So we can have it full. So we can change this to custom. And then we can change the size. So let's say the width would be maybe 420. And the height a little bit bigger. So let's 850 maybe. So let's apply this. And as you can see now, we have the same size picture as the, the one next to it, which looks a lot better. So if you can, if you see that your picture is flattened or distorted or not the, the right ratio, you can just change the size here. So the, the proper width here would be maybe around 420 for this one and the height maybe 850. So we can reduce that maybe a little bit, maybe 750. Let's try apply. Yes, maybe smaller again, maybe 600 altogether. There you go. That's a lot better. So you might have to try depending on your picture size, you know, have a different attempts at it until you find the right ratio. So this is absolutely spot on and perfect. And now we're going to change our opening hours. So again, here you can change the background picture as well and change the text. So let's go and change this background picture, although it's very nice the way it is, you know, it's very uh, friendly. But if you wanted to change that picture for another one, how do you do it? You click on the uh, column here because it's a column background. So you click on this and then you go into style. And as you can see, this is our picture again. So let's choose another picture. Upload file, select file. And let's go with this one now. Why not have another one? And then insert media. There you go. As you can see now, we have Indian food as a background. So this is absolutely perfect. And let's change our opening hours. So as you can see, this is our column here. And within the column, we have an element. So we're going to change this one. So now we click on that on the pencil. 
And as you can see, this is our text. So Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and then Saturday, Sunday, 9 a.m., 4 p.m. So let's say we're going to change the opening hours. So let's say Monday to Friday, you start at maybe 4 p.m., 4 p.m. until maybe 1 a.m., maybe late at night. And then Saturday and Sunday, maybe you start at 4 p.m. until late, maybe 2 a.m. Let's see. And then once you finish with this, you can simply update. You can always update at any time. Once you finish, maybe this or that or this one, maybe you can always save. And if you're not sure, you can always go back. You have history here. And as you can see, you can always go back to a previous time. Uh, it's running a, a, a automatic backup of our pages anyway so there you go so this is it so let's take, let's look at our home page now so as you can see a very nice hero section and underneath it it's your own content so dublin's favorite indian food opening hours about us and the main reason why people should uh, choose you over anyone else super friendly staffs that will make you feel at home so this is absolutely great so far isn't it so let's carry on with the rest of the page so if we go back here to our home page and scroll down the page you can see these are our main menus that we'd like to emphasize and highlight so you might want to uh, put your best sellers here you know so those uh, menus that uh, people usually come in and order the most so as you can see we have one two three four pictures and five uh, menus uh, meals so how do you go and change this to make it your own so very simple again just click on the headline and instead of ham and fontina you might put tikka masala and you can type in the description so uh, mild dish comes with rice and chicken delicious for the whole family something like that and then you can put the price here so for this just click on this and you can put the price so maybe uh you're in euro maybe you're in pounds so maybe i don't know let's put euros instead uh, euros i don't know 10.99 for instance so there you go simple as and then again as always you save after this And then if we go and refresh our page, as you can see now we have tikka masala, uh, mild dish, comes with rice and chicken, delicious for the whole family, 10.99. And you might want to change the picture next to it. So again, to change the picture, very simple. Just click on this, click on the picture, select any uh, picture. So let's select this one for now. Insert, update. And let's refresh. And that's it. Very simple, isn't it? And you can do the same for all the others, of course. You know, I'm just showing you here just for one. And you can repeat the same process for these underneath. So as you can see, the picture, the ratio is a bit different again. So every picture you're going to upload here, you want to make sure to keep the same ratio. So the same uh, size, basically, you know. So let's carry on and look at the rest of our page here. So you can do the same now again with this, you know, you can change this and add and change those settings to make it your own. And the same with the uh, reviews, maybe you can ask a few of your customers to leave you a few reviews and then you can type them in here. Maybe add pictures up to you really, you know. So we're going to look at the footer now. How can we change this footer? And our header as well. How can we change our logo to reflect our new uh, name here which is Himalayan so let's go and put Himalayan here now let's start with this and then we'll take care of our footer so for this we go back to our uh, dashboard so we exit out of this now exit to dashboard because we can't change these logos from here so the logo is a different uh, section on the website so go back again so from here you're going to appearance and then customize so this is a different section of the website to customize the 
theme in itself. And as you can see, we have access to the logo now and we have access to our footer as well. So what we can do from here is basically change our logo. So let's change it to reflect this name now, Himalayan. So to change your logo from here, we go into header. So this is part of our header and site identity. So click on this and you can see this is our current logo, Fresco. So all you need to do basically to change your logo is just change logo. And then you're going to select your actual logo. So I went ahead and design one very quickly here. So Himalayan. So there you go. But whoever designed it for you, you might ask them to uh, resize it. You don't want it to be too big either, neither too small. So maybe something around a 275 in width by 75 would be absolutely perfect. And then select and you skip cropping. So if your logo is wider than this box, just uh, never mind. Uh, you can uh, skip cropping anyways. So skip this. And as you can see, now our logo is here on the top. So we can make it bigger if we want to. If you think it's too small or not visible enough, you might make it a bit bigger. All you have to do is drag and drop this here. As you can see, you can make it bigger. Or the other way around, if it's too big, you can reduce the size as well, of course, you know. So a good uh, size would be about the same size as this button. Not too big, not too small. Uh, you don't want it to be too prominent either, you know, otherwise it, it sounds a bit too shouty. So this would be about the right ratio for this. So now you click publish. And again, if we go and look at our website and refresh, now we have Himalayan, that's the, your only logo. This is your name here, right there. And now it's absolutely perfect on brand with your restaurant. Now, if you don't have a logo and don't want to hire a graphic designer to design it for you. I'm going to show you a free way of designing it yourself. So you go to the Canva website. So Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, Canva dot com. And this is where you can design a free logo for your website. As you can see, I'm already logged in with my account. Uh, I've created an account, but as you go on the canva.com website, you'll have to create your own account. And once you log in, you'll have access to this um, dashboard here so from here just go and type in logo logo and then select this one here you have badge logo computer logo sports logo dj logo and different categories but what you want is just click the generic one here so logo select that and as you can see as you hover on top this one is free this one is free as well and some of them are paid you see this one you'll have to pay to get this one but if it's free just go ahead Really. So this one might fit, fit our, uh, the bill here. So let's click on that. And then instead of uh, Steinfield, let's go and change the text now. And then from here we can change our text here. So Himalayan, Himalayan, there you go. And then the bottom here we can put uh, Indian restaurant maybe. Indian restaurant, there you go simple as and maybe we want to change the color here so instead of a faded uh, beige maybe we want an orange one to match our company colors so there you go and all you do after this is that if you're happy with it all you have to do is click download as a png so you have the choice between jpeg and png i would choose png because png has a transparent background but you won't be able to download it with transparent background because it's a premium option but png have a high, has a higher resolution so just click download and then save it somewhere on your computer there you go so now we have it saved so let's go back to our website now and i'm going to show you how to um, uh, upload your own logo that we just created so again you go into header site identity and then select upload select file and this is the one we just created open now as you can see there's a lot of white space on top and bottom so we want to remove this so what you do now before you select it you click edit image because we want to crop this top and bottom
There you go. So what we do now is click on crop and we drag this down a little bit like this. And the same for the bottom. This is more in line with our actual logo, you know. So what we do now, we go back here and then we save this. So update. Here you go. So that's done. So if we go back to our logo here, now we can select it. Okay. We don't have to crop. It's done already. So crop image. And there you go. Now we have our new logo here, the one we designed on Canva. And again, if you want to make it a bit bigger, you can just use this drag and drop and increase it. So we're just going to keep it like this for now and then publish. Now if we go back to our homepage and refresh, there you go. We have our own logo that we just created. Simple as. Okay, so this is our header sorted. So let's look at our footer now and let's go and change this section here. So we can close this now. Let's close this one, close this one. And then we can close this one as well. So to change our footer here, we go back, we close this now. We go back to our WordPress dashboard and we go into appearance and you can see header, footer and blocks. And you'd want to click on this now. And then if you hover on top, top, you want to open this with Elementor. So edit with Elementor. Let's click on that. And as you can see, all we can see here is just the footer in itself. So is this, it's, it's the same principle, basically, we, uh, using Elementor so to edit our footer. So this is what our footer looks like, and this is what, how we can edit. So let's go and change our phone number here, maybe. So all you have to do is basically click on it and then go and change the number. So let's say 01234 This would be your number. This is how you can change it. So simple as. So now let's add a button here that would say order online. So people will be provided with uh, two options. They can call you to uh, order over the phone or they could have click here immediately click here and then they can order online so for that we go and click on those nine dots and we click on button so on this one here you see button we'll drag and drop it underneath it as you can see here just like that now click on this and we want to center that so click on this one here now it's in the middle and we're going to change the text so we're going to instead of click here order online there you go so now we might want to space that up a bit you know bring it down a little bit so what we go do is we go into advanced and you can see here we have margin and padding so these ones are basically uh, the settings you want to change to bring this down a bit so and to do so we're going to increase the top margin so you uh, click on this one so all the values won't be won't be linked together they'll be separate and we might add maybe fix 50 pixels on top as you can see maybe a bit less maybe 43 or 42 would be fine yeah just like that and then you click update so this button normally should be linked to an, a URL, so a web address, which we don't have at the moment because we haven't set up our online ordering system yet. But once we're done with the online ordering system, we'll come back to this and we'll put the URL here instead of the hashtag. But it's nice to have it ready now anyways. And then we can change our copyright statement here. So as you can see in brackets, these are uh, dynamic uh, information that's pulled from the database. So as you can see here, the first one is the year, that's the year, and then the site name, and so on and so on. So you might want to delete everything from here, from there. Just keep the year. The year is pretty handy. And then you can put the name of your restaurant here. So Himalayan, Himalayan restaurant. And then uh, maybe your tagline, uh, Dublin's favorite, that's what we said. So there you go. And after that, all you have to do basically is just click update. And if you go back to our front end and refresh, 
as you can see now we have call for all your reservations that's the phone number or order online so they presented with two options now and we have the copyright here at the bottom himalayan restaurant dublin's favorite so very nice indeed so this is for the footer as well so that's done now well, let's have a look at our other pages here we have menu so this is where you display your menu but uh, we're gonna hold off for now we're not gonna work on this one right away because we need to install our online ordering system first because before we can tweak this one and then we have the about us page uh, where you'll be displaying content about yourself you can have pictures about your, uh, your staff, maybe, uh, your head chef, sous chef, a restaurant manager, and so on. You know, very nice indeed. You can have maybe one or two testimonials. And if you are on uh, some uh, website like Yelp or Google Maps and all that, you can mention this here as well, you know. And then again, we have a footer that we've changed already. So there you go. So let's go and change maybe our header. And for this, we go back to our dashboard. We go into Pages about us and again if you hover on top you can see edit with elementor so i'm just going to open that in a new tab for now so we can easily go from one to the other so we're going to change this section here because at the moment as you can see it's not uh, indian food at all it is still a bit uh, italian maybe so again uh, we, we're using elementor so we have our different sections here so we click on our top sections here on this dots and then we go into style and this is our actual picture at the moment so we just click on it again just like we did before and then you can upload and or select an existing picture so at the moment we already have this one with the nice uh, condiment and indian food so my, you might as well select this one so i click insert and as you can see we have our picture here our new picture so again you want to make sure that the text is readable and then the the contrast between your text and the background is good enough so for that again is the background overlay feature which is here so basically opacity zero is clear and one is completely opaque so you want to find just a middle ground in between you know not too dark you still want your visitors to see the background picture but you want them to be able to read the text regardless you know so maybe around here would be uh, perfect and then about us you can just leave it like this you know this is absolutely fine and then you can tweak your content here as well so let me show you something for instance at the moment we have a picture on the right hand side and the text on the left hand side now if you wanted to move this around maybe you want the text to be on the other side all you have to do is just drag and drop the, the columns basically, basically you know so just click on this and then you can drag and drop it wherever you want so it could be on the opposite side now you have the text on this side or maybe you want it in the middle just like that you could change it this way it's really up to you you know and uh, you can customize it to um, to to fit your own personal preferences and requirements so for the sake of our uh tutorial here i'm just going to put it back the way it was let's put it back here so that's it basically now you can go and change your text here so instead of our restaurant you could have maybe uh himalayan restaurant da 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 and then uh, maybe some uh, context about yourself you know about us and so on so this is how you would change uh this uh, about us section now what about the pictures well, again, is the same principle, you know, if you wanted to change the picture here, all you have to do is just hover on top, then click on it. And then you're going to style and you'll change the picture. So if you had a picture of, uh, I don't know, your actual staffs or yourselves, you could just upload a new picture and then select the file like we did. And then you can just change it that way as well. Now, let's say you want to change those names. Let's say instead of Charles Davis maybe his name is neil patel and he would be the head chef so this is how you do it basically you know so again it's very simple you know thanks to the elementor uh, page builder you can easily edit any of those sections so let me show you something as well 
as you can see you have recommended by and all these different names uh, if you wanted this to be on top of the the testimonials and the testimonials at the bottom you can move these sections as well so the same way we move the column from one place to the other here from the right to left and put it in the middle you can do the same with uh, the sections basically so let's say if i wanted to bring this on top all i have to do is drag and drop and there you go now this one is on top so again with this one is the same you know all these sections you can move them up and down uh, to fit your own uh, preferences basically now let's say you don't need any of these you just want to have this section this one and this one for instance and you're happy enough with that all you have to do basically is click on this on this section here and then right click on it and you can delete and the same with this one right click delete and perhaps even this one you want to delete you know so right click delete now all you have basically is these two three sections so let's save it like this okay let's update and again we go back to our home, uh, about us page now refresh as you can see we have our new uh, background picture about us himalayan restaurant and then our chefs neil patel and that's it now you are you straight at the bottom so there is nothing in between those two now so it's really up to you, you know, you can tweak this around and make it your own, as I said. Now, if you saved it and you're not happy with it, you can always go back. And if you click on the history here, if you want to, if you click on this now, you'll go one step, uh, you'll go back one step. And then this one, you'll go back two steps. And then this one, you'll go back three steps. So you're back to the original layout the way it was. And if you wanted to keep this now, all you do is just click, update refresh and if we refresh our about us page as you can see these sections are back now so it's very simple indeed now contact page i'm going to show you how to uh, insert the google maps change your hours and most importantly how to uh, configure your online form here so you can receive inquiries via email as well okay so again back to our uh, back in so we can close this one now so back here so now we're looking at the contact page so uh, right click on this open a new tab again it's just easier to go from one to the other so this is our page again and as you can see if you click on those dots again you can change the picture if you want to you can change the content here so let's go and change maybe our phone number to reflect what we said so it was 01234567. That's what we said. So this would be your main number. So let's say you have an Indian restaurant and you're based in Dublin. So what you would do is basically click the location here and paste your address. So I went ahead and picked an address, a random address online. So 138 Partner Street, apparently there's an Indian restaurant based there in Dublin. So this is the one I copied and pasted. So this would be done for you automatically. All you have to do basically is paste your address here or just type it in, you know. So if you wanted to zoom in or zoom out or the height to be bigger or smaller, as you can see, you can tweak this around as well to fit your own preferences and own requirements. So I personally would leave it as is. 520 is absolutely fine. So that's our Google Maps sorted. And again here, just the same way we did it with the homepage, you can go and change your uh, hours so i'm going to show you a nice little trick now because you can actually copy and paste them instead of typing them again here from your home page so we had them on the home page if you go back to your home page open it with elementor with elementor you can actually copy and paste uh, sections and elements from one page to another which is very convenient indeed so let's go back to our home page and as you remember we had our hours here on the home page so if you click on this if you right click on it and you click copy and now if you go back to this one and you right click on it and you hit paste now you want to delete the other one there you go so now we have our hours copied exactly the same as we had them on the home page so now you can close your home page and now you can save this one update and this was absolutely effortless 
just two clicks, you know. So if we go and refresh now on our uh, contact page, as you can see, we have our phone number that's been updated. We have the address that's changed and our hours that reflect uh, those on the home page. Now let's go and change those two settings uh, here, those two sections, sorry. Uh, back to our home pa uh, contact page now. So in here, you can just change your location. So you put the address here. So I'm just going to paste the same address as before. So 138 Parnell Street. And I'm going to leave the others as is, you know. It's fine for now. And as you can see, we have a section here with social media icons. So if you click on this, as you can see, uh, they're all there. So you have Yelp, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Google+. Plus. So let's say you wanted to go and change those settings here. M maybe you don't have Yelp, so you can close this. You don't have Google Plus anymore, uh, so add item. Maybe you have Instagram instead. So how do you do, how do you change this? How do you add Instagram? So it's very simple. I'll show you in a second. So all you have to do basically is, and then you click on this, the icon library, and you can go and select another one. So let's put Insta. There you go, Instagram, select this one, insert, and now you have Instagram. Now you want to add maybe, I don't know, LinkedIn, let's say, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, there you go, insert. And if you have a YouTube channel, why not? Let's go and type in YouTube. Oh, YouTube. There you go, and insert. So how do you link these now to your actual social media uh, accounts? It's very simple, I'll show you. So if you go on Facebook now, you have a link here. So this is where you're going to put your link uh, to your Facebook page. So HTTPS forward slash forward slash Facebook.com and then forward slash your account, obviously, you know, your page. So and then update. And then in here, you can click on this link option, that uh, small uh, gear here. If you click on that and you want it to open in a new window because you don't want people to leave your website when they're on your website. You want them to open a new window, obviously, you know, otherwise you might uh, lose them. So open a new tab. You make sure that this one is ticked and then update. So now if we go back to our contact page and they click on Facebook, if you click on this, they'll be redirected to the Facebook page immediately. So that's very simple, isn't it? So there you go. This is how you change that. Now let's take care of our contact form. And for that, we go back to our page here. And then we click on the contact form section. There you go. And as you can see, it's using a short code, which means that it's another plugin who actually manages this contact form. And in this instance is WP form. So we go back to our WordPress dashboard and we go in the WP form sections here. So as you can see, WP forms, you just click on it, simply click on it. And as you can see, this is WP forms ID six. And if you look at here, WP forms ID six. So this is the form that it is using, using this short code. So basically a short code is to use a different element from a different plugin from within the WordPress installation. So if we were to click on this, now we can edit our form. And as you can see, we have our different fields here. So your name, email, contact number, and message, just like we have on the front end. Now, if you wanted to add a field, maybe you wanted to know uh, a table for, for how many people do you want to book a table? So you can have a multiple choice, for instance, or a drop down. So let's go with the multiple choice here. Uh, let's put this here and then you can change this by clicking on it so book a table for and then two people three four for instance whatever you want you know and then save There you go. Now, if you go into front end and refresh, you can see that part of your form contains book a table for two, for three, or for four. So that's basically it. Now, you want to make sure that that email reaches you. So this is the most important bit. So now you go into settings. 
and then in here as you can see we have the confirmation email this is the content notifications so you want to click on notifications and this is where the email will be sent to so in here you'll type in your email address so in my case it will be hello at mrwebreviews.com and if i uh, save this now if we go into the front there you go so if i can type in here maybe david and then uh, i'm just going to put uh, a random email i don't know uh, john.do at gmail.com want to book a table for four a contact number whatever and then here this is my message and i'm going to send the inquiry now sending there you go so uh, as you can see we received confirmation and we can tweak this message as well so thanks for contacting us we will be in touch with you shortly now if you wanted to change this again you go back to your contact form here and the confirmation here as you can see here this is our message thanks for contacting us we will be in touch shortly but now uh, you could say thanks for contacting Himalayan restaurant uh, we appreciate your interest in our food and then you could save it and then if someone fills in these details that's what they read next time so let's check my mailbox now and see what the email looks like okay and this is the email i received as you can see your name david email john.do at gmail.com book a table for four people and the phone number and this is my message and this message was sent from john.do at gmail.com so if you were to reply to that email it would go straight to john doe if you wanted to confirm that via email or maybe you want to ring them back afterwards now let's get down to the nitty-gritty of our website now so let's configure our um ordering system online ordering system so we can close this one and this one now and back to our wordpress dashboard so from here we're going to go into woocommerce and then we're going to settings and then we're going to go into a restaurant because the first thing we want to do is to activate this uh, plugin because it requires a license key. So when you order this from the bound to the code.uk website, you receive the confirmation email. In that email, there's a license key. So you copy and paste it here. So let's do this now. So all we have to do basically is paste it here. So paste and then click activate. Okay. And that's it. Just like that, our license is activated and we now we can use it so let's go through all the different settings now and as you can see from here our landing page for the order uh, online ordering system is restaurant order so let's have a look at this page so let's open all the pages now in a separate tab so this is our page here so let's have a quick look at it what it looks like and as you can see, uh, there's an error message here that says there are no valid categories available for this menu, categories in uh, brackets. So basically the reason is because we haven't created any categories yet. So we can close this for now. And back to our settings here. So basically this is run and operated by WooCommerce. So WooCommerce, as you can see here, you have orders customers coupons report and settings so we'll go through all of these later on during this uh, tutorial but then all the products are related to the woocommerce as well so these are the products that you can sell so products or meals or whatever you want to call it basically you know so you have all the products and then you have the categories so first thing we need to address is to create the category so let's create this first and as you can see at the moment, we have only one that's called uncategorized. So let's go ahead and let's create a few categories. So we could have maybe starters. Just click add new category here. Starters and then mains or main dishes. And then dessert. 
wizards plural there you go so we have created three categories so now you can reorganize them so our starter would be first you can drag and drop dessert would be last so that they're nicely organized you know so this is step number one and then we go into our products now. so all products and yeah, as you can see there are no products we need to create a new product obviously you know because this is a fresh new installation so create product and let's start maybe with uh we can close this maybe a tikka masala uh or chicken chicken tikka masala maybe and then we can have the description here and then you can put the price here maybe i don't know 10.99 and then we have to select our category of course you know see so this would be a main there you go and then we can just save it for now so publish with no pictures nothing just to show you how it works now if we refresh our page here as you can see we now have a chicken tikka masala description goes here and if i click on plus it's added to the cart so this is easy to order indeed now let's add a picture here to our meal to be uh, more descriptive so if we go into our product page again and we scroll down here by the side you can see product image so you click on this set product image and then we're going to select our picture so you can either as we did before upload a picture select it or you can select one that's already here so i'm just going to choose this one for now just for the sake of our uh, tutorial here so set product image and you have to wait a little bit until the picture is displaying here once it's displaying you can update there you go and then if we refresh you can see that now we have the picture just next to our uh, title and description so if you had more than one product it's easy for customers to spot what they're looking for obviously you know so let's say you wanted to add a few options here so you have chicken tikka masala your description but now you want to offer this meal with let's say plain rice pillow rice or egg fried rice so give them the option to add uh, different types of rice with their meal so how do we do that so let me show you here from the demo on the barn to website so basically you have a barbecue chicken salad here you can add go straight to the cart now if we go into the pizza section here if you click on plus you can see we are provided with, with different options you can uh, choose the base you can choose extra toppings and you can add uh, dietary uh, requirements as well and you can add plus or minus you can add the quantities here immediately from this window this pop-up window so if you wanted to do this on your website now we need to add an extra plugin for that so i'm going to show you how to do this if you if it's not necessary for you to do this you can just leave it plain if you're happy enough just to sell a uh, simple uh, meals like this if it works for you it's fine if you need the options we'll have to upload a uh, different plugin so i'm going to show you how to do this now and for that you need to download an additional plugin which is this one here the product add-ons from the woocommerce uh, website themselves so this one is 49 dollars so you just go ahead and buy it's basically you know so you just click buy now and then you fill out all your details you basically proceed to check out from this website and once you're done you'll receive you'll be able to download a file so once you've downloaded that file you go back to our our wordpress uh, dashboard and from your wordpress dashboard you'll go into plugins and then add new and from here you're going to upload the plugin you downloaded from this website here so upload plugin choose file and then you select the file you downloaded and then open install now and then you activate the plugin 
So as you can see now, we have the WooCommerce restaurant ordering and WooCommerce product add-ons, both of them installed and uh, activated. So let me show you now how to create a product and add all these different uh, options and features. Okay, so let's go to our product page now. So we go to products, all products. And we're going to open our chicken tikka masala product page. And if we scroll down, you can see now we have a new tab, add-ons. So we're going to click on this now. And we're going to add a new field. So basically, we want to give our customers the option between different types of rice. And then click on this. So what do you want to offer? Is it multiple choice or checkbox? So let's select multiple choice for now. And we're going to have radio button. And we're going to call this rice. So this field is mandatory, so it'll be required. So when they order uh, their meal, uh, chicken tikka masala, they'll have to select the type of rice they want to go with it. So uh, let's put our first option. So we said the first one was plain rice. So let's put this at 250 maybe. And then we add the next one, which was pillow rice, maybe three for that one. And then if we add another option now, we could have the egg fried rice, and this would be maybe 350 then. Okay, and then we can update. And if we go back to our pro uh, order form here, order page, if we refresh, and we click plus, and as you can see now, we have our chicken tikka masala, nice picture uh, on a, in a pop-up uh, window, and the description. And here you have you can select among those three different types of, of rices here. So basically, you can select either uh, plain rice, pillow rice, egg fried rice, and as you can see, it's being added automatically to our total here. So that's very simple, isn't it? So now, what if you wanted to add uh, something else, maybe something that's not mandatory? different types of bread, or maybe uh, if it was a pizza, different types of toppings. So offer different uh, options. So how do we do that? Let me show you now. So back to our product page here, and then we're going to add a new field. So as you can see, let me show you from before, we had the radio buttons here. So let's go and add another option here. So let's go and select check boxes this time and then radio buttons and let's call this maybe bread and then you can have plain bread maybe two you can have naan bread maybe 250 and then we can have the himalayan special why not or oh, himalayan sorry not mammalian Himalayan, there you go. And this could be maybe uh, four. There you go. So let's go with this for now. And then we save again, update. So uh, let's go back to our add-ons quickly. Let me open this. As you can see, this one is not required. So you can, it, it's optional basically. So let's refresh our page. Okay, so let's click on the plus. And as you can see, we have two different types of uh, options here. We have radio buttons like these, and we have check boxes like these. So what's the difference between the two? Well, basically, if you select radio buttons like this, you can't only select one option at a time. It's either this one, or this one, or this one, any of the options presented, but only one option. You can only select one option at a time. Whereas here, when it's check boxes, you can tick more than once. So I could, I could add plain bread and naan bread at the same time. Or just this one and maybe the Himalayan special. And as you've seen here from our uh, product page, this one wasn't made uh, mandatory, it's not required. So even if I was to leave it blank, I could still add to cart with no issues. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to add this for now just to show you. So that's fine. And if I wanted to use pillow rice and maybe Himalayan special and plain bread I still can do it as well so either way is feasible 
So that's very handy indeed, especially if you're selling pizzas with different toppings and, and so on. You could have the different toppings here and people can select among the different options. So they could say maybe I want extra cheese and maybe uh, anchovies or maybe pepperoni, whichever, you know. So very easy indeed. So now let's go and add a special box here that people can fill in themselves for the dietary requirements. Maybe they have special requirements. So we're going to add a field to our product page. And this time we're going to select a text box. So short text or long text. So let's go for short text for now. And just leave it as is for now. So dietary requirements and just remove this because it's a text option so we don't have any options here they'll have to type it in themselves and this is not mandatory just untick this and just update and now if we go back to our product page close this and if we refresh our page again so if we click our plus sign now, as you can see, we have an extra uh, field that's been added here, dietary requirements. And basically your customers could select pillow rice, plain bread, and they could put maybe uh, allergic to gluten. And then you'll be, you'll be made aware of this, obviously. And when you prepare the meal for that person, you can make sure that this is gluten free. So that's basically it, you know, for this. Now, once you start adding all your meals, you might have chicken madras, uh, chicken tikka masala, chicken madras, or vindaloo, and so on and so on. Once you have maybe five, ten different meals, maybe they share the same common uh, options. You know, you offer the same rice, the same bread, and want the same dietary requirements to be on all these products. Instead of typing it in on each and every product, like here, instead of this, you could go and create a global settings that will be applied to all the products of your selection. So basically, how do you do this? We go into add-ons here, so products, add-ons. I'm going to leave this page now, yes. And in here, we're going to create a new add-on. So create new. And as you can see, we got, it's the same principle, basically. So let's call this rice and product category. So you can apply this to uh, specific product categories or uh, you can have them up for all the products like we have at the moment. So at the moment, it'll be applied to all products, but you could, you could create different categories. So you could have meals for all the meals uh, only. So if you click on this, we can see we can apply this to the main dishes only. That's it, just for the main dishes because rice obviously uh, doesn't apply to desserts or the starters maybe, so just main dishes. So what we do now is to add field, and we do the same thing basically as we did before. So you can have uh, multiple choices, radio button, and this was called rice, this field was required, so we had plain rice, was 250, we had pillow rice, it was three, and we had egg fried rice. And this one was, I believe, was it uh, 350? Okay, so we're going to add a new field. And this one is, a, is check boxes. And this was called, let me see again, bread. So we had plain bread, 250, naan bread, three, and then we're going to add our Himalayan bread special, which was four, let's say. And we then add another field, which is a text, short text. Titled is Dietary Requirements. And we remove this. Okay. And now we publish. So now we have all these three options like we had here before. 
but instead of typing it in and creating it for each and every product it'll be done automatically for you so if we go and create a new product now which we're going to do all products add new and we will call this one chicken madras for instance uh, description goes here so this is a main dish our price is still 10.99 let's say and we're going to add a picture so let's select this one for now maybe this here save there you go publish so we didn't add anything here as you've seen we didn't do anything at all so we didn't have to uh, do that we bypassed it all together now if we refresh our page now or the page as you can see we now have chicken madras if i click on this we have all the options so this has been added to it immediately without us having to do it uh, each and every time so this is a great time saver especially if you have uh, dishes main dishes like this main meals who uh, who share the common or common options basically you know now how can you break this down here on this page uh, divide them between main dishes and desserts and so on so let me show you now so if we go into all products and create a new product add new and if we add a dessert maybe i don't know apple pie lovely apple pie delicious it is actually delicious so let's set a product image very quickly i'm just going to select one of these here maybe like this select and then we could put the price maybe 4.99 and this goes into the desserts section okay so publish and let's go back to our order page now refresh and as you can see now we have the desserts and the main dishes here you know all in a separate category now if you wanted to reorder this because normally people will order the starter then they scroll down uh, main meals and then scroll down desserts i suppose that's uh, more logical and as you can see here we have desserts first and then the main meals afterwards which uh, makes less sense basically you know so if you wanted to reorder that now so let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and this time we're going to go into uh, under products and then categories click on that and as you can see these are the categories we created earlier on so what we do now is just drag and drop so you want them to see starters first so you bring this up and then you want the main dishes main meals and then desserts that's it so now if we go back to our order form and we refresh you can see that now the main meals are first and then we have desserts so that's how you do it basically you know okay now for your customers to be able to uh, proceed to check out and pay you uh, we'll have to configure woocommerce now so let's go and uh, configure our woocommerce now so this is uh, woocommerce and we're going to settings and let's start with the general settings okay so in here you're going to start by typing your address so uh, 7175 Felton Street Covent Garden City of London so I'll just put our own details here the receipt 2H9JQ and then here in the general options select locations where do you sell so normally if you run a restaurant you're not going to sell to all countries uh, i don't think you'd be exporting maybe to france or germany or anywhere in canada united states you'll have to sell to a specific country so you'll have to select your country so let's say uh, you based i'm going to select for ourselves here united kingdom so i'm just going to select uk shipping location where do you ship to uh, you might disable the shipping unless you want to charge a special fee for delivery so in which case we leave it enabled for now 
and then default custom location shop based address just leave it as is and then if you are VAT registered registered for taxes you'll have to tick this box as well and we're going to configure the settings as well the tax settings as well so would you like people to your visitors to use coupon codes will you run special offers and things like this if so uh, you might want to leave this uh, ticked might want to check this box here and it's a very nice marketing tool anyways you know if you go on facebook and so on and run a special offer you might offer them maybe a 20 percent discount if you order online uh, just to boost the sales online sales and get them to get used to order online so this would be a uh, very handy indeed so once you're done here you can select your currency so uh, it could be euros could be dollars you know and how do you want it to uh, show on your front page so depending where you live in the world obviously you might use a comma or a dot or the other way around so just uh, configure that based on where you live of course you know and then you click save so that's our first step next we go in the products tab so on the shop page, basically, uh, you just leave it as is for now, you know, just leave here everything. Basically, you just leave everything as is, except this one you might take or untick it. Maybe uh, do you want to enable product reviews? Do you want people to be able to put to leave reviews on your website? So if someone orders food from your restaurant and, you, and they got it delivered and they were happy uh, with it, they might leave a review, which might uh, boost your sales as well. And do you want to enable star rating on reviews? So they'll be able this is visual aid, aid basically you know they'll be able to see uh, how many uh, ratings you received or if you don't want to just disable it and just save it's really up to you you know so we're going to the inventory tab now right here and as you can see because you're running a restaurant is not itemized uh, you produce the food as you go along as the orders come in you want to make sure that this box is not ticked, unticked, unchecked. So enable stock management. No, you don't want uh, to manage stock for food uh, orders. And then downloadable products. This is not related to your field. Just leave as is as well. So let's go into the taxes now. So again, it depends if you're VAT registered or not. But if you're VAT registered, you have to mention this. Are the prices in the system, will you enter them uh, inclusive of VAT, of taxes, or exclusive of taxes? So usually if you're selling to the public, you would tick this box here. Uh, because the price uh, you will enter is the price they pay, basically. You know, if you, if you, if you have a chicken tikka masala, it's $10.99. That's the price the customer will, play, will pay. So uh, this one is more for B2B, uh, for wholesale businesses. So calculate tax based on customer shipping address, customer billing address, or the shop base address. Because your restaurant, you're only based and selling to your own uh, country or city maybe, you know, just click our shop base address for now. And then shipping tax class, uh, standard reduced rate or zero rate so that again uh, it depends on your uh, current situation so if you charge that uh, in your delivery uh, you'll have to select standard and if you're not you select zero rate so depending on your uh, country and circumstances you'll have to select either of those so at the moment i'm just going to leave it at as standard so rounding you leave that as is and then display price in the shop so basically those prices here what are these prices? Do you want to display them excluding tax or including tax? So again, if you're selling to uh, the public, it would be including tax and display price during cart and checkout, again, including tax. So everything should be including tax because that's what your customer is expecting to pay. And then you save those changes now. That's it. And then again, if you are VAT registered and if you ticked that box here, uh, enable tax rate if you're VAT registered you will see this option here which is tax rates reduce tax rate and zero rates so if you want to if you are tax registered you'll have to set up your tax uh, rate so based on your country so I'm going to just add here add a row and you select your country so in here is the country code 
So if you're based in Belgium, it'll be BE in France, FR. If you're based uh, in the UK, it's be UK. So I'll select United Kingdom. And then we're going to put the rate. So in the UK, it's 20%. And you call it something so uk vat 20 percent and then after this you can save now this could be a fr for france you know and maybe 23 percent i think it's in france and then france vat 20 percent or whichever you know if you're based in the us or whichever country worldwide you just select your country code in here that's all and then the zero rate you can do the same. So UK, then rate zero, and then zero rated items, and then save this. So this is in case you do a free. Uh, your deliveries are not uh, VAT are not taxable. Basically, you would use this VAT rate with it. And then we have the shipping. So shipping in this case is basically delivery, you know, uh, let's call it differently. Maybe it's a delivery. So you add a shipping zone. So again, this will be within your own country, you know, so uh, call it uh, delivery. And then you select your zone and then you add a shipping method. So here you're going to charge something, obviously, it's flat rate. So add shipping method. And then we're going to set up the rate for this. So you click on this. And how much is it? How much do you charge for delivery? So maybe you charge a uh, three. If it's nearby. So that's that. And maybe you offer free delivery uh, of a certain amount. Order for, I don't know, 20 euros or 20 dollars, 20 pounds. And you receive a free delivery. So add something here. And then we go and select free shipping, Add free shipping. And now we're going to click on this, open it. So we're going to call this free delivery. And then we're going to set up the amount. So it could be, as I said before, uh, if you have a coupon code, you could use a coupon code. Or there's a minimum order amount, a minimum order amount or a coupon code a minimum order amount and a coupon count so these are different rules you know so maybe we could select a minimum order amount for now and let's set the amount at maybe 15. so if you say over 15 euros order free delivery and then save and this is basically how you set up your uh, delivery fee now, as a food delivery service, you might want to uh, limit the regions where you deliver the areas. So you probably only deliver within maybe 10, 15 miles radius, and that's it. And how do you do that? It's very simple. You can limit to specific zip and postcode. And it's list one postcode per line. So I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead with a, a few digits here. So 4160, then 4162, 4165 and 4166 for instance so these would be maybe you know, the towns and cities and surrounding villages uh, where you're located and where you actually do operate and deliver so this is how you can uh, limit and set uh, restrictions basically to whom can order from your website okay and then we have our payments section and as you can see here, we are presented with a few options already. So we have direct bank transfer, check payments, cash on delivery, and PayPal. So the only two suitable in here would be maybe cash on delivery. So your customers can decide uh, when you uh, you go and do the delivery. They can pay you immediately there when they get the food. And they can pay immediately online as well. So let's go ahead and activate those two for now. So cash on delivery, if I open this, let me show you quickly. You can call this differently, obviously, you know, pay with cash upon delivery. So there's not much to add to this. That's basically what it is. And when it comes to PayPal, so if you have a PayPal account set up for your business already, you might use it and get customers to pay you immediately up front uh, before uh, the delivery. So if you click on PayPal standard, it's one simple step basically here. 
all you have to do is just put your email address that's linked to your PayPal account. That's all. So you type in your email address here. That's linked to your PayPal account. And then you simply click save. And that's it. Your PayPal account is ready to be used in the checkout process. Now, let's say you're using an online payment uh, provider, a payment gateway that's not in here. So let's say you're using Stripe, maybe your Amazon payment or any of these. How do you do that? So let me show you quickly. So all you do basically is go into, into the plugin section and add new. So I'm going to open this in a new tab for now. So this is our plugins and we're going to add a new one. So you, you'll be looking for, let's say we're going to add Stripe. So Stripe, if I type in Stripe here, basically, we have different options, but you want to make sure it is Stripe for WooCommerce. So as you can see here, we have two different options. We have Stripe for WooCommerce and WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. So this one has 800,000 plus installations. So I think we can trust them. So let's click on install now. And then activate. There you go. And now if we go back to our uh, payment uh, sections here and then refresh, you will see that all these have been added now. So we have Stripe, we have Stripe SEPA payment, bank contact, so far, Jaro paid, so etc. etc. So all these have been added now. So if you wanted to activate Stripe, all you do basically is activate this, enable it, and then you click on Stripe. And then we can set up our details here. So Stripe is slightly different. Uh, they request a publish publishable key and secret key. So you can have a test platform as well. These are your test credentials. And then you have your real credentials. So if you want to set up your real credentials, you uncheck this one. And now you're going into live, live, live. And these are test. So it's up to you really because it's very handy with Stripe. They offer you the option to have a sandbox basically and test the, the, the gateway before going live. Once you have tested the platform, you're ready to go live. Just untick this box and put your live credentials here. So that's that for the payments, you know. So this works out the same for any uh, payment gateway you'll have in mind. So let's say... Going back to the plugins now, add new. If you want Amazon Pay, it's the same. You see WooCommerce, Amazon Pay, you would install this one then. Okay, so we can close this now. So back now, we have accounts and privacy. That's our next tab. So in here, we have a few options. Uh, allow customers to place an order without an account. So you'd want to leave this tick, I suppose, you know, so they can register, uh, check out as guest. Uh, do you want to allow customers to log in uh, into an existing account during checkout? So if they already have an account, I would highly advise you to check this one as well. It's going to make it easier for them. Uh, account creation. Allow customers to create an account during checkout. Check out. Allow customers to create an account on my account page. So I would say this one you might take because once in, during the checkout process, they might want to create the account immediately. And when creating an account, automatically generate an account username for the customers. This makes things even more easier. So take that as well. And then everything else you can leave as is for now. So just save this. So let's go to our next tab which is the emails configuration. So basically when someone places an order, they, they'll receive an email con confirmation in their mailbox. I would personally leave everything as is, you know, uh, you don't have to bother with this. But the one thing I would change for sure is maybe the from name. So you could put your company name or business name here. So let's say Himalayan restaurant. And then in here you can change the colors so you can match the colors of your logo etc so in our case here we have an orange color so let's make it an orange so remove this now and if you click on this you can see you can scroll through the different colors so let's go towards an orange one 
and I would select this. So now if someone receives the uh, confirmation email, they will actually see this uh, matching the same colors as our website. Now you might want to put your logo, the header image, so we could put the logo we created here, uh, right here. So how do you do this? It's very simple, I'll show you now in a second. So you go into Media, Library, and you open a new tab. So Media Library. And as you can see, this is our logo. If you click on it, so just click on it like this, and you can see the description, the, the URL here. You copy this URL, copy it. So it says copied, and now you're going to paste it here. Paste. And then save. And now your logo will be displayed on all the email confirmations that your customers and yourself will receive. So I'll show you that later. Now we have integrations. So in here, you don't need this. This is for geolocation, but you're not using geolocations when doing food ordering. And then in the advanced section is basically where you set up your landing pages based on those uh, different uh, situations. So the card, the checkout, the my account page, and terms and conditions. So all this is all selected by default. I would leave as is again. And finally, we have a restaurant here, which is related to our food ordering system here. Plug in. So these are our settings. So as you can see, we activated the license key in the beginning. And then if we scroll down, we have the landing page for the restaurant order, which is this page here. So this is all fine and good. And then we have different settings, you know, like order form options. So show category titles, show category description, show product image, show product description, and show by button. So again, I would advise you to leave just as is you know it is fine absolutely fine the way it is now columns here you can have two or three columns so basically at the moment we only have one column here as the uh, the main column here but if you selected two columns it will be uh, divided in half basically or divided in three depending on how you want it to be displayed so image position left or right again the image is on the left at the moment maybe you want it on the right and then uh, product description, limit the description length or show full description. So at the moment, we have a very short description here. There's no problem. But maybe you have a full lengthy description, maybe two, three hundred words. And maybe you just want customers to see a snippet, just a little bit of it. And if this is the case, you might want to limit the description length. All the method. So quick and light box. So what's the difference between the two? Well, at the moment, if we click on this, as you can see, the light box is still showing, even though we selected quick. Why is that? It's because at the moment we have options. So if your product has options, it will show, it will open the light box. If there is no option, it goes straight to the uh, shopping cart. So that's basically what it is. If not, you might select light box. And then even if your product doesn't have any options, it will open up a light box. I think quick is probably better in this case. So light box, do you want to show the product image and show the product description? So once I click on this, do you want to see that picture? And do you want to see the description? Because technically they've seen the picture here already and the description is right there. So you might not want to display them again. It's up to you again, uh, depending on your preferences. Then once you're happy enough with your settings, again, save changes. Now that's all for the WooCommerce settings. Now let's go and clean up our WordPress settings now. So we go into settings and we go into general. So general. And as you can see here, we have the site title. So you want to change this to your own now. So Himalayan restaurant. And you put a tagline here. So as we said, it was Dublin's Spirit, that's what we said from the beginning. So you might want to make sure this is your admin email address. This is the right one. So I'm just going to put hello at mrwebreviews.com. And you might configure the settings. So uh, depending again where you're located in the world, you might have different date formats and time format uh, based on your own preferences. And then after that, you just click 
save changes. There you go. And then you, you will have to confirm your email address. So you will receive a confirmation email. You click on the link inside that email. And once you refresh this page, you'll be all set with your new email address. And then from here, the only setting left is the permalinks. Permalinks. So basically, let me show you at the moment. It says Mr. Web Reviews forward slash index.php forward slash restaurant order. So this is our URL for this page, which is not uh, actually very friendly so what you want to do basically is to click on the post name here select this one here post name and then make sure the custom base is product forward slash for your WooCommerce installation just like this so then you click save changes and now if you go back to our page here and refresh and as you can see, we now have an SEO friendly URL, Mr. Web Reviews forward slash restaurant order, which is super convenient indeed. So based on this, now let's go and change our um, reservation button here and change this to order online and link it to this page. So I'm going to copy this URL, copy, and let's do this now. And for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard and we're going to appearance. And then we're going to customize. And from here, we're going to select our header and select the primary menu. So this is the menu, basically, you know, this one we have. So select this. And as you can see, uh, the button here, that's a uh, button, sorry, it says reservation. So we want to change this now. We're going to call it order online. And we're going to replace this with the link we just copied from here. And then we can paste it here. Paste. And then publish. Okay, so let's go back to our home page here. As you can see, we now have a button that says order online. So what would happen if I was to click on it now? It would bring us straight to the uh, order page. As you can see, now I can select my main meals, I can add plain rice, add to cart. There you go. So let's do the same on the rest of the home page. So let's go back to our home page. And as you can see, we had a few different um, button here we needed to change. So we're going to change this one to order online and this one as well to order online. And then we have this one to change in our footer, like we said earlier on. So what we do now again, we go back to uh, this page. So we're going to change our footer one since we're here now. So we go back to our footer. And for this, we're going to appearance, header, footer and block, blocks. So click on this, open it. So oh, click on this. And instead of the hashtag here, we're going to paste our URL. So there you go. And then update. So if we go back here and click on this, refresh. If we click on order online. As you can see, that's working fine, absolutely fine. So let's go and change our other buttons here, this one. And for this, we have to go to our, back to our dashboard and we're going to pages, all pages. That's our home page. Home page is here. Edit with Elementor. Here we are now. And if we scroll down, click on this one here, and then we can change this. So instead of discover, the entire menu is, uh, sorry, order online. And again, instead of this hashtag, you paste the URL in here. And we do the same here. So instead of discover offer, order online, and we paste the URL. 
And I think that's all we had. Yes, that's it. So update. Okay, all done. And if you go back to our home page and refresh, as you can see, we have now order online on top. We have the order online here, order online here, and in the footer. So four different options uh, to grab your customer's attention and get them to order something. So the last thing we need to do on the home page is to replace this link and link it to our, our About Us page. So the About Us page is this one. So if you click on this, select that, right click, copy, and now we go back here on top, we select this, and we can leave more about us, that is absolutely fine, and replace the hashtag with the URL we just copied, and then update. And then if we refresh the home page once more, if we click on this, we're going to go straight to our about us page. Now there is one last page we have to look at is the menu page here. So we have our online ordering system here and then we have our menu page. So this may be redundant for you. Maybe you don't use it at all. So we can just get rid of it altogether. Or maybe you only want to have two separate menus, one for online ordering and one for sit down meals for people who actually call into your business and sit down in your restaurant and have the food served uh, at the table, which might be a bit different, in which case you can have a sit down meal, which is here. And then at the bottom, you may may ask uh, book a reservation or book your table in here. Maybe you can add an extra button. It's up to you really. So at the moment we have this page, let's say you don't want that page, you want to get rid of it, or you're happy enough with home about us contact page and the online ordering system. Uh, so what you can do then in this instance, we go back to our dashboard, exit to dashboard. Back again, once more. And from here, you go into appearance menus. And you can see here the menu page. All you do is just open this and then remove. Save menu. And now if we refresh. There you go. Now we don't have that page anymore. So again, it's really up to you based on your own circumstances. You know, you might want to add this page and tweak it and change it to make it your own. Or maybe you just want the online ordering system. So whichever way suits you best. So one thing you might want to add is the shopping cart right here on top. Just in case, you know, if someone adds something to the shopping cart, they can go back and forth to it. So what we do basically is back to our menu here. And as you can see, we have pages and then cart, cart page. So take this and then add to menu. And then the shopping cart could be right after the contact page. Maybe save this. So if we refresh our page now, as you can see, we have cart here. So if we were to click on this, we go to our shopping cart, which is empty at the moment. So if we go back, Okay, so we have the card sorted. Now let's create a coupon code. So we're going to WooCommerce and then coupons. And let's create maybe a 20% discount uh, coupon code first. So let's create this. And let's give it a name. So I'm going to, I'm just going to simply call it coupon and 20. So that's coupon 20 gives you 20% discount on this uh, website. So what type of discount is it? A fixed card discount, a percentage discount, or a fixed product discount. So what's the difference between those two here? Percentage discount is basically 20% of everything that's added to the cart. A fixed cart discount is, for instance, uh, 
you give a, a five euro coupon code or five dollars coupon code so if someone orders for twenty dollars twenty euros they get a fixed five per, uh, euro discount so for us here we're going to select the percentage discount and which is the amount is 20 percent and you need to set a coupon expiry so let's say i'm just going to add it until the end of the month so this month only and allow free shipping so check this box if the coupon grants free shipping so this is not our case here but if you provide free shipping with your coupon code this is the one you'll take but we don't need this for now so let's just click publish okay great so we have created our coupon so coupon 20. now let's go back to our uh, website and let's go through the whole checkout process and show you how the orders are being processed okay so let's order something online so i'm going to order a chicken madras so with plain rice and uh, himalayan special i'm going to put here uh, gluten-free food please and add to cart so i can either click on this but let's say i missed it it's too late this is why we created the cart option here so we can just click on cart and from here as you can see we now have uh, our uh, review here and as you can see it's over 15 uh, which is the allows us to get free delivery so we have free delivery because it's over the amount that we set early on which was 15 which is very nice so as we can see here we have a coupon code so i can apply the coupon code here or or in the next step so if i didn't see it here i missed it i still have the option to enter it here so let's go ahead and enter our coupon code which was coupon 20 so at the moment the total is 17.49 if i apply the coupon and as you can see now our coupon code has been applied so we get a three euro 50 uh, discount three pounds 50 discount we still get free delivery and the total is 13.99 now so very handy indeed so we have our payment methods here so we can select between cash on delivery and paypal which is the two we set up so for our example here i'm going to select uh, cash on delivery and then we're going to fill out our details so i'm just going to put here john doe the house number i'm going to put uh, number 17 the orchard why not city i'm going to put uh, london because we need a postcode so we'll do see to h 9 jq uh, phone number zero one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and we just go ahead with this fine fair enough so let's place the order just like your customers would do online themselves there you go so this is the confirmation so check out thank you your order has been received and this is the confirmation so we have plain rice uh, chicken madras one uh, plain rice himalayan special gluten-free food please and the total is 13.99 and cash on delivery now let's go back to our dashboard here into woocommerce and we click on orders as you can see we have a new one which is this one which is uh, john doe who placed the order so if you open this you can see uh, the details of the order you can see that person ordered a chicken madras plain rice himalayan special gluten-free food thank you and this is the delivery address as you can see uh, you have all included in here a total and everything including that everything is calculated automatically so this is how you know uh, what to do and how to process the orders so let's say you send that to the kitchen is being processed and it's done so it's completed so you can click complete it update and now you know that the orders is out the door en route to your customers ready to be delivered so let's see the confirmation emails now so when you receive a new, uh, a new order how do you get notified so different ways you know you can leave this page open all the time 
it's up to you when a new order comes in you can see this one is completed if your new one comes in it will push this one down and you'll see in green pending a new order in red sorry pending which means that's a new order so you'll know a new order came in or you can receive check your emails as well if you have your mobile phone with you uh, you might receive a notification when you receive a new email which is the same so i'm just going to show you now the email confirmation that you will receive and how you know you received a new order okay so as you can see this is the order confirmation i received so this is our logo that we configured earlier on order number and the details so you will receive an email regardless anyways you know so if you have uh, again as i said if you have your mobile phone on you and you hear a bling bling a notification coming in then you know immediately there's a new order so it's all the same you know either this or as i said you can keep this page open here with all your orders and when a new order comes in it will uh, show up here with a status pending in red so you'll know immediately when your new order comes in and then one final thing when you're happy with your website when you're ready to go live everything has been tested and you're absolutely 100 percent happy with the results you go back to here to the maintenance page and don't forget to switch this one off and then not just that but click save as well so save and now everyone will be able to access your website so there you go guys as you can see we now have a very professional looking website and once you go live you'll be ready to make money and enjoy each order that comes in so as always i leave all the necessary links in the description below i hope you found this helpful if so please consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss a single update thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video.